Hello and welcome to the Sharp 600 brought to you by Covers.com. I am your host, Jason Logan. And that was the Loonies, classic hip hop beat. I got five on it. And of course, those guys were talking about smoking weed and we're talking about betting on football. But you know, whatever your vice, thank you for tuning in uh, to the podcast here on the Friday. And thanks to my man, Dell, producer extraordinaire. You're always behind the scenes here at the 600. Dell, what's good? Not much is good, actually. I wasted three hours of my life yesterday, and that's three hours I'll never get back. Yeah, a lot of people sour about that, sour about that. After I hit a couple props, I actually turned that one off. So I I, I, I was like, I, I don't want to do this anymore. But recapping our pod picks there, uh, for what was a dud of a Thursday night game between the Colts and the Browns, we did hit Alec Pierce over receiving yards. We did hit Matt Ryan over passing yards. We got shafted. Mo Alley Cox was not as active as we like. We had his over and receiving yards. That went under. I also did have a Russell Wilson over 13 and a half yards of rushing on our Blitz show with uh, Jingles earlier in the week. And that one hit. So a good night for a bad game in terms of betting. And if you followed those picks and if you like what we're doing here on the Sharp 600, we ask that you please rate and review the podcast when you get a minute. We've gotten a lot of great feedback since we relaunched this sucker. Appreciate that. We would love some more feedback. So if you could do that, that would be great. Heads up. If you can't tell, I'm still not feeling great as well, too. Been sick all week. Uh, so forgive me for the sick noises and the snorts and coughing fits that may occur here. It has been a steady diet of cough syrup and cold medicine. So shit could get a little weird today if I, you know, I get off on a tangent. Uh, so with the Thursday night football game safely in the rear view, and thankfully we'll never talk about that again. We turn our attention to the beef of NFL week five over the next 600 seconds. So Dell, if you would, please. Hold on to your butts. Yeah, little Samuel. Some spread picks right out of the gate here. So I broke down my bets on the Bengals plus three and a half on the Tuesday show. Also the bet on the Saints minus five and a half. Hit the rewind button. You can listen to the last show on Tuesday to get the goods behind those bets. But a few more sides that I do like in week five took plus three with the Cleveland Browns hosting the L.A. Chargers. We dissected a tough schedule spot for the Bolts in week five. Second straight road game, third road game in four weeks. On top of that, you have L.A.'s dismal defense against the run coming up against the top rushing attack in the NFL. Nick Chubb. Kareem Hunt and this Cleveland ground game is explosive too they don't just wear you down they will blow you out 25 runs of 10 or more yards this season LA has allowed a run of 50 or more yards in three straight games that included getting rolled by Houston running back Damian Pierce last week the Browns they dominate possession they control tempo also getting some stand backs uh, standouts back on the offensive end you got Miles Garrett Looks like he's going to play Greedy Williams in the secondary, possibly coming back for a defense that he owns the second lowest completion percentage allowed in the NFL. So Browns plus three for me. Next up, Chicago plus seven and a half. What? But uh, yeah, more of a bet against the Vikings than anything here. Minnesota has been riding that week one win over Green Bay for four weeks now and is somehow laying seven and a half points after ranking out really among the worst teams, offense and defense. In the league over the past three weeks, and let's recap those last three weeks, you got your ass wax against the Eagles. You had to come back from two double-digit deficits to beat the Lions. And then there was the ugliness that occurred in London last Sunday. The Vikes, 19th in EPA per play since week two, 27th in EPA allowed per play on defense in that same span. And the Bears, they're a tough team to back considering this offense. However, Quarterback Justin Fields has been up against some very sound and very aggressive pass rushes in 2022, and he struggled under pressure. That said, the Vikings, they don't bring the blitz, and they don't own a high pressure rate. Only 19.5% of dropbacks are they getting pressure. Fields in a clean pocket. He's actually a good quarterback, completing 63% of throws for an average of 7.5 yards per attempt. This is a guy, too, that can do damage with his legs. So I like Chicago plus seven and a half. And quickly, San Francisco is minus six and a half taking on Carolina. It's a short week. It's a road game. It doesn't matter. The Niners have all the edges in this one. Coaching by far, offense and defense. And it's the defense that will do the most damage here. You have the top pressure team in the NFL coming off a seven sack day against the LA Rams on Monday. They now face what is a bad Panthers pass protection and a QB who sucks overall, but he super, super sucks when he's under duress. San Francisco able to get pressure with just the front four, which means they can drop linebackers in coverage or they can set one on a spy on McCaffrey. Keep him contained. 
Carolina's defense is good. Don't get me wrong, but they're tired. This stop unit has played the most minutes of any defense in the NFL this season. And Shanahan's plotting and physical approach is going to break this Panthers team down over 60 minutes. Carolina's defense goes from number three in defensive DVOA in first halves to 31st in defensive DVOA in second half. So Niners wear them down minus six and a half. Uh, last week, we lit it up with the props last week. We were propping it like it's hot, right? Right? Yeah. Uh, a couple props. I have a play here for week five. Dallas Goddard, the Eagles tight end, over 42 and a half receiving yards. Books had Goddard's yardage prop, prop as low as 41 and a half here for week five. That's a bar that seems pretty low considering his role in this Eagles attack and what is a soft spot for the Arizona stop unit. The Cardinals blitz happy, aggressive defense. That's left them susceptible to short strikes to tight ends. They allow the second most yardage to the position, as well as three touchdowns to tight ends already in 2022. Goddard's caught 16 of 20 balls on his way to an average of 60 yards per game. This guy's ranking out among the top tight ends in the league in advanced metrics. But what's even more, he's the top yak guy in the NFL. I think he's getting like 12.8 yak yards. Uh, Carol, or, uh, the, the Cardinals dead last in yak allowed. So Goddard over 42 and a half receiving yards. We go back to Sunday night football, Bengals wide receiver, Jamar chase. I'm going to go over five and a half receptions on Sunday night football. Chase is definitely flattered by all the double coverage that's coming his way over the past three weeks, but he's pissed, uh, with his decline in numbers. He wants the ball and Zach Taylor. He says, coach, he feels the pain. He's had a mini buy here after beating up on Miami on Thursday He's had time to cook up some opportunities to get the ball in the hands of his best playmaker. Now, Chase has torched this Raven secondary for big gains last year, but that D was set up a little different uh, than the new defense under Mike McDonald here, who's playing a lot more zone. And the Bengals are using Chase in a different way, too. They're using him a lot more short and intermediate passes rather than over the top. So while I don't think those home run plays develop, I do think he sees plenty of touches in the short game and picking up those yak yards. So uh, Jamar Chase over five and a half receptions for Sunday night football. Dell, what do you like for week five? Last week, we were all over Mike Evans. This week, we're going to be all over Jamar Chase because Woo! this season, Baltimore is third worst in the league when it comes to opponent yards per game, allowing 425. Jamar mm-hmm. Chase showed some frustration last game, and I think Joe Burrow is going to find him on every single opportunity possible, resulting in him finding the end zone at plus 127. All right, so the Mike Evans Love Fest paid out big time last week. So Jamar Jamar Chase Love Fest on Sunday Night Football. Hopefully going to have the same result. Uh, We're going to go back to our TD Anytime matchup game because it's a lot of fun and and people love to bet these TD Anytimes. Uh, What do you got for me? First off, we got Daniel Jones at plus 420 or Alan Lazard at plus 195. Jones is kind of always live to run one in. Because, you know, they're not getting much on the passing game, even with the injury. Uh, but this is a guy that, what, he scored two touchdowns last week. But for me, it's it's Lazard. He, I think he's the only guy on this team that, that Aaron Rodgers trusts right now to catch a football. Next up, Brandon Cooks plus 180 or Travis Etienne plus 180? Uh, never count out Cooks. That's one thing that I know. And this is a guy who's just a steady producer on a very bad team. Uh, you know, he's going to be on the field most of those snaps. Etienne splits with Robinson. So, so Cook scored last week. I, I think he has a better chance of doing it, plus 180. And we'll wrap it up with Devin Duvernay, plus 170, or T. Duvernay. Higgins, plus 155. Duvernay. The name just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Uh, despite that, that beautiful last name, uh, Higgins has really enjoyed that extra coverage that uh, Chase has uh, seen. And it's allowed him to hit those home run plays. Baltimore, as you mentioned, not very good against the pass. They've actually allowed the most air yards to passing attacks this season. And I really like Cincy's defense. So I'm going to go uh, Higgins plus 155. So thanks, Del, for serving up those matchups. Uh, before we do get to the two-minute drill, uh, a couple futures buys. I'm not a big futures fan, you know, the whole house edge and all, but more of it's like tying up money for a long period of time that gets me. That said, I have been known to shop for some futures odds as markets kind of overreact early in the season. And there are a couple bets that I think are worth a poke right now uh, as we head into week five. So in the MVP market, Joe Burrow sitting there plus 2,500. Now the Bengals, they're better than you think. And Burrow at this price is pretty good considering this offense is starting to get up to speed and the defense it really looks elite right now. So a win over Lamar on the weekend would definitely swing the MVP odds. Burrow plus 2,500. And then Tampa Bay to win the NFC title. This is a good one. These guys were the favorites heading into the season to win the NFC. Injuries have slowed their production out of the start. It's come down quite a bit here. Uh, But guys are getting healthy, and this defense is still elite. They got Atlanta, Pittsburgh, and Carolina the next three.
three games. Those are winnable games, and this price is going to come back down. So I think it's a good value. If you like Tampa Bay and believe in Tom Brady, buy them plus 500 right now. All right, two minutes real time with Arthur DeCesar of the famed Las Vegas Superbook. Arthur, biggest, uh, heaviest bet game, sorry, for you guys heading into week five. It's going to be the Cowboys-Rams. Late time slot, obviously two prevalent teams. Cowboys always take money. Going to be a lot of bets on it. Right on. Biggest liability for you guys here. A lot of weeks you could say it, but this week it is going to be the Raiders on Monday night. We took sharp action on them, plus seven even money. We're now flat, but a lot of public money on the Raiders as well. And all the teasers and parlays tied into that one too. Yep. Yep. Biggest sharp draw for you guys in week five. You know, Vikings. We took Viking money, sharp money at six and a half. We took it at seven. It's now seven and a half. Obviously, Vikings at home. Bears are no good. Terrible news for me on the Bears, plus seven, uh, plus seven and a half. Biggest Joes versus pros split out there. An interesting one. Texans and Jags. Pros are on the Texans. Joes are on the Jags. Jaguars finally becoming that public team that we always thought they could be, right? Biggest injury issue influencing the odds this week. You know, a lot of the times it's going to be the quarterbacks, but really this week there's not much. Daniel Jones look like, looks like a play. The Saints, I don't think there's really much of a drop-off. Falcons, no Pitts, no Patterson. They're, mm-hmm. four, they're 4-0 four and ATS. They opened 8. They're now 9.5. That could get as high as 10 before kickoff. Right on it. Earlier segment, I talked about maybe futures wagers worth a shot right now. Any futures bet you think worth a shot right now? Yeah, I think it's an interesting one. It's not going to be as juicy as like Super Bowl stuff with odds, but I think the Niners to win the NFC West at plus money. They're plus 115. They're still the co-favorites with the Rams, and they've beaten the Rams, and they just look better. Mm -hmm. And you led us to the promise land last week. Not only a clean cover with Tennessee. What do you like? What's the best bet here for week five? Yeah, I should have done the out uh, the outright money line, but you know you can't get that uh, wacky sometimes. I like the Browns at home plus two and a half against the Chargers. Ah, oh, very good. I'm also on Cleveland plus three right now. Uh, yeah, I, li- I like the way that's setting up for them at home against LA. That's still very very dinged up. There, there's the horn. That's it. This episode of the Sharp Six Hundred Wrap. Thank you, Arthur. Thank you, Dell. Thank you for listening. Uh, we love us some ratings and reviews. So when you have time, please go on and say a couple kind words. Give us a good rating and review. Best of luck to you guys in NFL Week 5, and we will talk to you on Tuesday.